Hi everyone, uh, welcome. My name is Elena Semenek and this is Psychology of Happiness, where happiness is the purpose of life. And today uh, we're gonna have a free webinar and the topic for the webinar is overeating and your inner child. Uh, and I have a beautiful presentation for you. And today we're going to talk about what are the underlying reasons be behind the overeating, who is asking uh, for more and more food. Uh, we're going to discuss eight reasons why people are eat more than they need to. Uh, eight reasons why it is so difficult to count calories and the amount of food that you eat. And uh, we're gonna talk about what are the hidden benefits of extra weight. And I will share with you 10 tips what to do, how to lose weight without diet and exercise. And we're gonna talk about how we substitute food for a lack of love, sexual pleasure, self-confidence, social status, and sense of self-worth. And this is the webinar before, uh, this is the free webinar before the eight weeks of healing the inner child online training. And this training is gonna be from October 10th till November 28th. And we will meet online on Thursdays at uh, 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, Los Angeles time. And if you cannot uh, join the group online, you can watch uh, the video later and do all exercises at a convenient time to you. Uh, all sessions will be recorded and I will email them to all participants. Total, uh, we're gonna have 12 weeks and the first four weeks are free and uh, the first four weeks are theory. And today's, today is our third webinar. And if you came to this webinar uh, not from my email, it means that you are not on my subscribers list. So uh, please find the link below this video um, and you can subscribe to my free webinars. That's very simple, it's super easy. Uh, you have to go to my website, enter your name, uh, your country and your email, and then you will receive an invitation to all my free webinars. So the link is under this video. So first uh, four webinars are free and it's gonna be uh, theory. And the next eight weeks is gonna be mostly practice. Practice. So we're gonna do exercises, meditations, and some um, guided meditations and some uh, exercises from art therapy. So we're gonna heal our inner child. Oops. If you don't know me, I am a psychologist and uh, a life coach. I am um, a founder of Psychology of Happiness, where happiness is the purpose of life. I graduated as a, as a social and political psychologist from the Ural State University in Russia. And um, in 2005, I received a bachelor degree in psychology. Within the last 15 years, I've been studying different methods of uh, psychology, including NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, Family Psychology, and Family Constellations. And I graduated from the Initiation Institute of Male and Female Maturity, which studies relationship within yourself, within your partner, uh, relationship uh, in family, and I specialize in uh, childhood trauma and help people to create more fulfilling, happier life. So today we're gonna talk about inner child and the overeating. So who is asking more and more food? And the answer is your inner child. 
on my first webinar uh, you can see the recording of it uh, if you did not see it um, if you did not join me for the live webinar the link is below this video so on the first webinar I was uh, talking about who is the inner child and how can you recognize how can you notice your inner child which word he uses and how can you notice the inner child in other people so uh, I will just go briefly that uh, about the inner child and the inner child is the part of you that uh, uh, is asking to be healed as the part of you that uh, went through traumatic event in your childhood and could not process this traumatic event so eating addictions or eating um, disorders eating dependence is formed during the oral state and this is the state when the child uh, was just born and it's from the birth to 12 18 months the part of the body where uh, a child receives the biggest pleasure is mouth and the babies uh, like to suck uh, mommy's breast uh, bottle they like to chew blankets uh, they put everything in their mouth uh, Taken out from the mother's breast too early can lead to serious addictions later. For example, a person might have a problem with weight, uh, all type of eating disorders. The person can develop a smoking addiction, uh, alcoholism, biting pencils, chewing gums, anything that um, related to mouth. Oral people or people with an oral type of personality uh, are trying to achieve satisfaction or receive joy through their mouth and because uh, at this age from 0 to 18 months a child depends completely on his mother at this period a baby also develops a sense of trust and control uh, the first uh, emotional contact is a reciprocal smile which happens between the first and second month of child's life an anxiety of uh, the absence of the mother develops uh, at about seven months and the uh, fears and uh, fears of strangers and anxieties continues to develop for between eight and, and nine months so if the child was uh, not with his mother during the first nine months especially he will develop some type of eating disorder or eating addiction and today uh, I would like to talk to you about eight reasons why people eat more than they need and uh, the first reason is uh, food addiction as a compensation for parental love if we did not receive enough love in childhood uh, from your mother from your father or from both parents then you'd probably develop a um, eating addiction you also might uh, develop eating addiction if uh, your parents loved your siblings siblings more than you or maybe uh, your grandparents had favorites and it was not you so uh, you did not receive enough love and um, you have to remember that you have a container from your mother and container from your father so mother and father should fill out their containers with their love and if you did not have a lot of love from your mother but had enough love from the father maybe too much love from your father one container cannot fulfill the other and as a result we expect uh, that our partner our lover will fulfill um, that pain that we have inside if you have a partner but he might be busy or he might work a lot or he might not give you the love that you need your container is still gonna be empty if you don't have a partner then you will uh, demand uh, demand it from your close friends from your children and of course they also cannot fulfill this container there are two different types of love so people begin to develop eating mechanism when you feel sad you eat when you feel angry you eat when you feel that you want to be loved and you don't don't have this love in your life you feel sad you feel bad and you are going to the free refrigerator and you are eating something so you can 
somehow compensate, lower the desire for love. And food is the easiest way to replace a lack of love. Mm. Because we really feel pleasure, we really can feel the food inside of us. So we change our focus from our painful feelings inside uh, towards uh, taste of food. And the first feeling, uh, feelings of love we receive through mother's milk. When mother is giving us milk. And uh, baby's brain is not uh, developed at this time. And all his receptors uh, are concentrated in his mouth. So he feels pleasure through his mouth. And breast milk is um, fat and a little bit sweet. So that's why uh, we like uh, fat food and sweet food. We usually don't have cravings for carrots or for um, broccoli. Um, when we open the refrigerator and even if we see carrots, we usually don't want to eat carrots because carrots cannot replace um, love for us. Uh, we like sweet and fat stuff because they actually, when people eat sweet stuff, they they also fat right and you feel more relaxed uh and your body is um feeling better the anxiety level is going down so when we feel sad we want to eat something sweet when we feel tired we want to eat something that will give us energy when we feel angry we like um to chew something like piece of meat or nuts or chips um Food has a wide variety of different uh, flavors and those different flavors can replace our emotions. We can replace one with another. And diet will never work if our inner container of love is empty. And um, people can go and try different diets they can go to, for to the nutritionist uh, they can try different sport activities uh, but uh, the problem is not with the diet the problem is that you are not um, fulfilling the pain that you have inside and exercises won't help you to fulfill this pain so in order to lose uh, weight in order to start eating healthy uh, in my opinion, you should first work on your psychological problems. And when you're going to work on your psychological problems, then you can, you can add diet and exercises uh, to achieve a faster, uh, better result. So you need to heal your inner child. So at this uh, workshop that will start in October, we will actually work on your inner child and we will do exercises that will help you to connect with your inner child. And on the second uh, week of uh, the online training, we're gonna do three exercises. The first one is uh, uh, three wishes by the goldfish. Every child want to feel loved, want to be happy and want to be protected. And this is gonna be our three wishes uh, that we will ask the goldfish to to fulfill for us right uh, the second exercise exercise uh, will be my divine parents you will have a chance to feel uh, the importance and value of your life you will have it's going to be an exercise where you can experience the joy because you were born and you will receive a divine blessing to be happy and successful in life. And the third exercise will be uh, the divine egg exercise. And this is going to be uh, an exercise to reborn. We will, you will go through the reborn process psychologically. And by reborning, uh, by experiencing these uh, feelings, you will be able to kind of to recreate your life from the beginning. So this is going to be the week that's called birth as a miracle of life. If you're not going to work on your inner child, then uh, 
you might have a reverse effect. Um, by limiting yourself, when you begin to limit, if you begin to limit yourself in calories, if you will try to avoid fat and sweet foods, your anxiety level will go up. And because uh, you are trying to replace uh, stress level with food, so you you kind of like suppressing your feelings. Uh, but by lowering lowering calories, your anxiety level will go up. So uh, at first you were eating to keep your anxiety down, but now you're limiting the amount of food that you eat. You're, uh, you're eating healthier, you're eating um, less fat food, and your body will experience even greater stress. And as a result, you, you will probably 99% have a nervous breakdown and you will have uncontrollable eating uh, and you will gain weight back and often people gain more than they had before um, and sometimes it can be three five and even ten times more than the real than you really need because now your anxiety level is here and you need more food uh, to lower your anxiety level down People with a strong will, uh, they can limit themselves, but often they will switch from one addiction to another. Uh, and in, if you don't want to do this, if you don't want to switch from one addiction to another, you need to work on your psychological problems. You need to work on your inner child. And you need a professional person uh, who can help you to do it. Meditations, free meditations on YouTube um, doesn't really work because this mechanism was formed uh, when you were born and it's extremely strong. Uh, just simple meditation when you close your eyes and imagining your inner child and giving him some love uh, is not going to help you. Uh, you need to work with a professional person who will guide you and who will support you during the whole process and who will help you to develop a, a series of exercise that will help you to overcome and your that will help you to heal your inner child and it's also very important to understand what type of love are you trying to suppress is it love from your mother is it uh, from your father or maybe it's an anger for your mother because she did not protect you from your father or opposite uh, the free tips, uh, as I promised, the first free tip, what can you do um, to work with your um, inner child? Uh, create a symbol that will represent something that you really, really like and something that you really, really enjoy. Uh, you need to create a talisman of love or symbol of love. It can be your picture, a picture of your children. It can be a picture from your childhood, something that will bring joy when you look at this picture. And you need to put this picture on the refrigerator or inside the refrigerator. And um, you need to change the location of the picture every three days. So you can put it on the top shelf, then you can move it to the bottom shelf because if you're gonna put it and leave it on the same place your brain will ignore it after three days and you will not notice it and you need to see this picture for at least 30 days so within the next 30 days this picture will remind you that love does not live in your refrigerator so every time when you open the refrigerator you will see this picture and your brain will understand that love and the food are two different things and uh within the first week probably nothing is gonna happen but in 30 days uh, you might notice that when you are opening the refrigerator instead of grabbing some ice cream or some uh, fat uh, sausages you will um, take an apple maybe or maybe you will decide to drink a, to drink some juice instead uh, again in order for this tip to work you need um, to move your symbol of love around every three days
The second reason why people eat more calories, more food than they need is because uh, they substitute food for a joy in their life. Basically, they substitute food for emotions. And emotions m makes our life more beautiful, brighter, more diverse. And when we feel emotions, it means that we are alive. People without emotions, uh, they don't... Uh, they, they feel depressed and they don't have motivation to live. So food can uh, give us variety of emotions. So uh, when we eat salty food, we wrinkle. When we eat spicy food, we feel heat inside. When we eat sweet food, we smile and feel pleasure. And food can combine several flavors in one dish. Uh, one dish can combine several flavors which means we can experience several emotions at the same time. For example, an ice cream corn, uh, it's cold and sweet. If you add uh, fruits or nuts, it's gonna become cold, sweet, a bit sour and crispy. So here you go, four different flavors in one ice cream corn. Asian food, for example, Asian spicy food, it can be hot, spicy, sweet, again, variety of flavors. Uh, with food, we replace our emotions. Uh, if we don't have enough joy in life, if we don't have enough things that make us happy, we go into the refrigerator and we substitute our emotions with food. So here, tip number two, uh, create a list of things that make you feel great, that bring you joy and this list should be at least 50 different things not five not ten 50 and you should put this list somewhere uh maybe uh next to your refrigerator maybe next to your office table maybe on the mirror in your bathroom so you can constantly see this list and start doing those those things start doing something that's gonna bring uh, joy into your life and on the online training um, on the third week we're gonna talk about parents love a little bit more we're gonna uh, talk about emotions and we're gonna do again three exercises the first one the list of childish joys we're gonna create this list together and we i will teach you what to do and how to use this list um, so you can connect on with your inner child on a deeper level then we're gonna do an exercise that's called a fresh milk and as you already know with mother's milk the child receives all uh, the necessary nutrition and vitamins and this uh, practice will help you to heal your body and give your inner child everything that he did not receive during your childhood and the third exercise that we're gonna do called the summer rain and the rain is a symbol of father's love the father who protects the father who nurtures uh the father who helps his child to grow and if a real father was absent in your life or he was not available for you maybe he worked too much maybe he was not emotional person maybe your father never hugged you never uh, told you that he loves you then this exercise will really really help you uh, this exercise will help you to uh, to break the victim behavior and uh, will help you to lower the level of your anxieties and fears and you will create the inner space within yourself the space where you can feel safe and protected the third reason why people eat more than they need uh, because they want to fulfill, fulfill their social needs. We all want to be loved and to belong to our family. And we all want to belong to some group of friends, to some social groups. We, want, we all want to be identified with some people. We don't want to be a lonely wolves. And in my, uh, at my webinar about the universal family laws, we talk about five laws and one of them is the law of belonging. 
and I'm Russian. I belong to the social group that called Russian people. I am also American and they also belong to the social group that's called American. And I'm also a psychologist. I also belong to the group that's called psychologist. So we want to be part of a group. And in order to be part of the group, I have to do something that will identify me as that group member. And national cuisine is one of the biggest identifiers. All Americans know uh, and love French fries, hot dogs, burgers. All American kids like pizza, mac and cheese, lemonade, chicken nuggets. Uh, and all American kids hate veggies and soups. So this is what makes American Americans. Uh, who can say no to grandmother meatballs? Who can say no to grandmother mac and cheese? And every culture has food that reminds uh, people about their childhood, about their family. Grandmother's pancakes, dumplings, sweet pies. Because we want to belong to our group, because we want to belong to our culture, we uh, subconsciously prefer to eat uh, our national cuisine. And this happens subconsciously and even people who like healthy food, who change their uh, lifestyle, they still time to time like to go and eat burgers, french fries or something like fat, like pancakes or even the mac and cheese or pizza. And uh, we work a lot uh, on this uh, desire of belongings in my uh, webinar, in my workshop, which is called Healing the Family System. And my free tip number three is to watch uh, the free webinar about the universal family laws. And I uh, will leave the link below this video because in that webinar, I talk more in details how you can how you can be part of the system and not being so attached to it. The fourth reason why people eat more than they need or than they have to is uh, we use food as a cure for pain and anxiety. And in all movies, in comedy shows, you probably saw it millions of times, a girl who is going through the breakup with her boyfriend is crying and eating tons of ice cream or chocolate. She is holding like big ice cream uh, bucket and eating it. And when we feel pain, when we feel anxiety, stress, we are drawn to food. And uh, this is the attempt to ease the pain, to weaken it. Uh, we don't want to feel the pain. We want to minimize it. And food has taste. That's why it's working. So when we eat, we switch focus from painful feelings inside of us uh, with the feelings of the food, with the taste of food. When we eat oily food, fat food, we, eat, we feel relaxation. And this is physical. This is how our body works. It's not something that we imagine. No, this is actually our body. And often a person feels sleepy after eating heavy fat food. Uh, so the food can actually reduce our feelings of pain and anxiety. Same with the dessert. Ice cream, uh, cakes uh, makes us feel good, makes us feel happy. So it does help when we want to minimize the pain. Uh, but the problem here is that the actual pain is not going anywhere. We are suppressing the pain a little bit for a short period of time. And when we finish eating ice cream, the pain comes back and we have to eat more. We need to eat more. We want to eat more so we can suppress it again. That's why people eat more and more and more. And if you have pain, maybe some pain that you experienced many, many years ago, but you still, uh, Mm, you did not resolve the situation. You st the pain is still inside of you. For example, maybe your parents uh, went through the tough divorce. So maybe your mother was um, mm, too critical towards you. 
or maybe you lost um, a close friend, a close family member, and you were not able to recover from that situation. So the pain is still inside and you're constantly trying to suppress it uh, with food. You're not thinking about the situation constantly, but subconsciously, uh, this pain is still inside of you. And when it's trying to come out, uh, and pain is trying to come out because it's asking to be healed. So when it's trying to come out, you need to eat more and more and more. And uh, when we fall in love, we can completely forget about food. Uh, love feeds us with emotions. Love uh, can cure uh, previous pain. If you had a very tough breakup, if you had a painful relationship in your life and then you meet a guy or meet a girl and you fall in love with this person, then love can cure the previous pain. So love nourishes us and cravings for food disappearing. Uh, the second reason why uh, food helps us to, to lower the pain and anxiety is simply because of this chewing motion. When we eat food, we are doing chewing motion and any motion, repeated motion can lower the anxiety level. And um, if you, people who like to do sport, uh, they usually feel less nervous because of this, the same mechanism. When you run, it lowers your anxiety level. When you do boxing, it lowers your anxiety level. Even when you do just regular dancing, uh, any exercises, physical exercises low, will lower your um, anxiety level. But when you feel pain, what is easier? Uh, grab something from the refrigerator and eat an ice cream or go for a jog. Of course, it's easier to substitute uh, pain with food. Of course, it's easier to, to use food to suppress, to lower your anxiety level than to go jogging. And um, three tip number four here is to create a list of compliments that you can tell yourself for the next 40 days. Uh, it's not going to help you to heal your problems completely, but it will help you to lower it a little bit. Because the defense, this defense mechanism of substitute pain and anxiety with food, um, the mechanism how we can, not substitute, how we can lower the pain and anxiety uh, using food was developed when you were like maybe from 0 to 18 months of your life. So the, the defense mechanism uh, using food is extremely strong and it's very hard to fight it, to break it on your own. Uh, here you need to work on your uh, insecurity. Here you need to work with your self-worth and self-confidence. And start, you can do it by starting saying compliments to yourself. So every day, give yourself at least seven compliments and keep doing it for the next 40 days, at least 40 days. The next reason, reason number five. And this reason is uh, because we want to know that we are being loved. We want to know that we are important for other people. We want to know that other people value us. And when we did not receive um, this feeling of uh, importance in a good way, this feeling of self-worth, we are trying to substitute it with food, with actually body size. So if you imagine two men, uh, one of them is small and another one is tall, big and over, has an, with an overweight, right? With an extra weight. Uh, and imagine that you are walking in a dark alley and those two men are going towards you. So are you going to be afraid of a small tiny guy or are you going to feel at least some type of um, discomfort when you see a big tall guy? Of course you will feel scared when you see like a huge big guy in a dark alley going towards you. So often people um, 
who uh, get uh, a raise at their job, who is, uh, who is getting promotion at their job, often they gain extra weight. Because uh, this is how physically, visually, we um, demonstrate the, the sense of authority. So people who um, need to demonstrate their strength, their importance, their authority, they put extra weight. The extra weight brings like extra fear. And in Russian language, we have the phrase, uh, when people are afraid of you, they will treat you with respect. And this is true. When people are afraid of you, they will not uh, argue with you. They will uh, think twice before they're gonna say something. They will, uh, they will not use some rude or mean words because if they are afraid of you they will treat you with respect they might not uh, think about you respectfully but they will treat you with respect they will do it um, visually right they will not they will try not to disappoint you and um if the child was criticized shamed if the parents, uh, if his parents were telling him constantly about his unperfectness, like shame on you, uh, look at other kids, why are you behaving this uh, way, um, I am ashamed of you, how could you? So when uh, a child is growing in, um, in this type of atmosphere, uh, he will develop a low self-esteem and low self-confidence. So this child will probably eat much more than he needs because he will show somehow he will he will want he wants to show that he is strong and big and he uh, this is his defensive guard. Uh, in, and um, even uh, for the bodyguards, right? Most people don't want to hire bodyguard who is small and tiny. When people want to hire a bodyguard, they want somebody big, with big muscles, with extra weight. So authority means big, and big means extra weight. And here is my tip number five, is to create a list of achievements. Uh, and it should be, again, at least 50 things, not five, not 10, 50. And uh, it might be big achievements or small achievements. Uh, the most important that it should be 50 things and you need to put it somewhere where you can see it constantly and um, somewhere where you, can, where you can read it every day and after seeing this list again for another 30-40 days after reading this list uh, you will start seeing change in your life uh, the reason number six is the need of security the need of security is the main and the most important thing, uh, the most important need that every child needs in his childhood. If your parents did not provide you with a sense of security, if you did not feel safe, if you did not feel that your life is protected, if your parents uh, did not tell you that they will protect you, they will be on your side no matter what, then in 99% uh, you, you can relate to this uh, reason. If you don't feel that your life is secured and protected, then it can lead to low self-esteem, low self-confidence, uh, inability to protect yourself, inability uh, to create the healthy boundaries. You uh, have a problems with accepting your body or some part of your body. Um, you uh, will, the child with insecurity issues will develop a trust issues later in the relationship. Sexual problems in the relationship also related to this point. And in the mother's womb, it was a nice, safe place. But when a child was born, he experienced a tremendous stress. Um, and uh, a little baby, an infant, he does not know how to communicate. So he used cry as his communication mechanism. When uh, a baby is cold, he cries. When a baby needs attention, he cries. When a baby is scared, he cries. 
when he feels pain he cries so baby cries all the time and often mothers uh, automatically assume that if baby is crying then he is hungry the first thing that uh, mothers want to do is to feed the baby so they give food first and then if baby does not stop then they will try to figure out what uh, is happening what are the reason might be for his cry so uh, this is your eating mechanism right uh, this is uh, how you use food uh, so if uh, your mother was not could not understand your desires during your childhood that now you eat every time when you feel sad stressed scared pain anything any discomfort you need food uh, so here is tip number six before you go and grab food ask yourself what do you really feel what is your real desire at this moment are you sad are you angry are you tired or are you hungry because hunger is one only one of the reasons why baby is crying and there are a lot of different reasons why baby can be crying and you need to go back to your childhood you need to reprogram the, this mechanism and you need to learn how to identify those feelings and it's it's very hard i, I want to be honest with you it's very hard to do on your own and i recommend uh working with your therapist psychologist with the support group but if you want to do it on your own it's also possible it's extremely hard but possible you have to ask yourself what am i feeling right now every time when you want to have something and you know that you already had your lunch breakfast dinner ask yourself what am i feeling right now and again uh on uh, the eight weeks of healing the inner child the first week the very first week we're gonna talk about this uh mechanism and we're gonna this week is called return to paradise and we're gonna do an exercise that's called the divine child and we're gonna learn how to connect how to understand your inner child how to understand what uh, do you really need and how to understand your true desires your emotions and then we're gonna do an exercise which is called the magical lake and magical lake is a symbol of a mother's womb and we're gonna return to that place where you can get anything that you want the place that which called paradise so you will fulfill your child with a sense of security with the love with the freedom and happiness and then we're gonna do an exercise turtle which will help you to feel protected this is extremely important if you did not uh, receive protection in your childhood then in 99 percent uh, of time uh, your eating addiction uh, is because of that and the turtle exercise will help you to get back to this secure place and to feel strong protection by the turtle shelf uh, you will be able to create a secure place within yourself uh, and on the seventh week of the webinar we're gonna also work with the boundaries how to say no how to protect your boundaries and we're gonna work on your self-esteem because if you don't feel protected, then you cannot say no. Then people can use you, abuse you. And uh, if you cannot uh, say no, if you don't know how to defend yourself, instead of creating those boundaries, you're going to the refrigerator or you're going to the fast food uh, restaurant and you buy something fat, sweet for, you, for yourself and you're trying to suppress those feelings. And we're going to do an exercise uh, where you're going to learn how to say no. I will actually give you specific phrases, what to use, how to say it, when to say it, with whom to say it. Because uh, there are people are different and with different people, we use different phrases. And I will teach you how to um, find an exit in any situation. It's going to be an exercise which called five ways, uh, five ways to go. Uh, so five ways to find an exit in any situation 
uh, reason number seven. Uh, food as a substitute for sexuality. And this is the biggest... Um, Okay, let's, let's say this. Uh, so all those eight reasons, all of them are connected to each other. And if you have an extra weight, if you don't, uh, if you're struggling, if you cannot lose weight, then probably you have not one reason, probably you have five or six out of eight reasons. Because all those reasons are connected. If you did not have enough love in your childhood, then probably you were criticized a lot. Then your sense uh, of... Uh, worth uh, was uh, not developed, uh, you did not feel protected, uh, you did not feel safe and if you if all of those things happen then you have a problems with your sexuality because sexuality in order to be sexy, in order to feel confident, in order to be in touch with your body you need to feel loved and protected and overweight uh, hides uh, sexuality uh, we cannot see the beautiful body shape under the big belly big people wear big clothes big hoodies jeans uh, black color clothes women with extra weight don't wear heels and heels are sexy uh, women with extra weight don't show their body on the beach uh, they don't wear swimsuits they usually don't go to swim they just uh, sit next to the pool in their uh, dress uh, and, and trying to hide their body. They never show their body on the public. Women with extra weight usually sleep in big pajamas, not in some sexy night uh, gown and uh, not in transparent, not in translucent night gown. They usually wear some big pajamas that's going to hide their body. And girls who did not receive acknowledgement of their beauty from their parents are afraid to be beautiful. They are afraid to be sexy. They are afraid to be desirable. They don't know how to accept compliments and they don't know how to be sexy and feminine. They prefer to hide their sexuality, to hide their femininity because they are afraid of being judged and they feel discomfort when people look at them. So, we, people use extra weight to hide behind those extra weight, behind this clothes, behind this um, attitude. People, guys will not look at me, guys will not pay so much attention to me because I am fat. And in reality, this type of women, of course, they want to be loved, of course, they want to be sexy, of course, they want to be feminine, but they cannot because they uh, feel insecure and their inner child is crying inside. So in order to work on your sexuality, again, first you need to heal your inner child. And here is my uh, free tip number seven is to write an essay about I am afraid to be sexy because just write maybe two, three, four paragraphs uh, try not to overthink uh, not, not to overthink it uh, just write whatever comes to your mind I am afraid be to be sexy because and this will help you to understand yourself better Reason number eight, internal conflicts. Uh, an internal conflict is when a person desires two opposite things at the same time. For example, I want to be beautiful, but I don't want to give up on sweet things. I want to be beautiful, but I love hamburgers and french fries. I want to be slim, but I don't want to go to the gym. I want to be confident person in myself. I want to develop confidence, but I don't want to work with a therapist. I'm going to listen to free lectures. I'm going to um, think about it, but I'm not going to do exercises and I'm not going to go and uh, uh, participate in workshop. Only theory. The inner conflict uh, is between your id and your ego. Ego, sorry, ego. And if you did not see the second webinar, which was last Thursday, 
where I was talking about four stages of childhood trauma, I highly recommend go and watch it because uh, I was talking a lot about it and ego, about the uh, evil and an angel who are sitting on your shoulders and uh, telling you uh, opposite things. So who are those two parts? Who are those two parts who are conflicting with each other? The first part is your consciousness. The part that's saying, I want to lose weight, I want to be beautiful, I want to achieve goals. So your logical part, your conscious part. And the second part is your unconscious part, is your subconscious part. And something that you don't know yet about yourself, something that uh, you don't realize. Uh, it can be your inner child, and if uh, your inner child creates an inner conflict, then it's going to sound something like this. I don't want this. I'm tired. I, um, I don't know why. Uh, I just don't want to do it. Uh, like I just don't. So when um, you have a desire, but you cannot logically explain your desire, like, why did you eat uh, an extra piece of pizza? Like, I don't know. I just, I just felt that I wanted or I did not even notice it. Then this is your inner child. The inner child does not need explanation. The inner child does not want to explain. So the inner child mm, creates some actions that does not make any sense, any logical sense. <clears throat> of course, there is a reason why your inner child eats this extra piece of pizza. But uh, because this is uh, in your subconscious, you cannot understand that part. You cannot connect with this part. And second um, element that can create uh, this inner conflict is your fears and your old beliefs. For example, uh, the belief can be like this, uh, women, Thin women, slim women are not happy. They uh, do sport every day. They, they are on a diet all the time. They are pretending that they are happy and they are pretending that they like salads. But in reality, skin people are not happy. They are torturing themselves. And this might be a belief that uh, you have deep inside of you. So no matter what you do, you're not going to lose weight. Uh, another belief might be that a uh, healthy food is terrible. I, I do not believe that healthy food can be tasty. I do not believe that you can feel uh, satisfaction with healthy food because healthy food is all about broccoli, carrots, and salads, and um, some uh, boring uh, things. And it's, it's not going to make me feel good. I'm not going to feel energy. I'm not going to be satisfied. So healthy food is not tasty. Uh, the third belief that you might have is my life is already difficult. So why should I suffer more? Uh, food is at least something that I can really enjoy. Uh, that's something that really makes me happy. So why should I sacrifice? Why should I suffer more? Here, what can you do? Um, free tip number eight. Uh, think about uh, the inner conflicts that you might have. And uh, try to write down maybe 20, 25 statements why it's hard for you to lose weight. What are the reasons uh, that you cannot lose weight? And when you have like 20, 25 statements, you can go over them and see what things are from similar or what things are kind of repeated. And then you can identify your inner conflict. Once you're going to bring your inner conflict to your conscious level, once you're going to be aware of it, you can work with it. I want to share with you eight signs of an inner conflict. Uh, sign number one. Constant feelings of sadness and or depression. If uh, nothing is pleasing you, um, if you cannot remember when was the last time you felt joy, if you uh, haven't been happy for a while, then uh, you have an internal conflict. The second sign uh, of uh, 
the inner conflict is feelings of laziness or loss of interest. If you feel lazy to start new things, if uh, even if something that you really, really like, but when you start it, you lose interest uh, in two days, in three days, so quickly, you lose your interest quickly. Uh, this is uh, the sign of an inner conflict. The third sign, uh, if you feel angry all the time, most of the time, uh, people who feel angry uh, a lot uh, usually means that they live uh, by other people's rules. When uh, a person cannot create boundaries, when a person cannot create rules, when you have to follow other people's rules, advice, uh, then you feel angry. And this anger can be towards other people or towards yourself. Uh, sign number four, unfulfilled desires. Uh, for example, a woman wants to build a, a career, she wants to be successful, and at the same time, she is dreaming about a family with three kids. And uh, she wants to be a good mother and she wants to have her career. And in order to be a good mother, you have to spend time with your kids. You have to dedicate yourself to your family. And in order to have a successful career, you have to spend time on your business and you have to dedicate to, your, to yourself, to your business. So this is your um, inner conflict, unfulfilled desires. When you have two desires that uh, you cannot um, fulfill at the same time. Uh, sign number five, not enough time. Uh, when a person saying something like, I want this, 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 and I also want this. For example, a person saying, I want to change my career, I want to travel, I want to find um, a soulmate, I want to learn how to surf, I want to learn new language, I want to, um, to uh, maybe I want to do hiking more. So when person wants to do several things and he doesn't have enough time. This is an internal conflict. This internal conflict will um, immobilize you and you will go to the refrigerator, you will be drawn to, to food and you will eat more than you need to. Uh, sign number six, lack of new desires. Uh, when you don't know, uh, when you don't have any desires, when you don't really know what's gonna, what, what things are going to make you happy and maybe uh, things that made you happy before is not, does not bring joy anymore. Uh, this is the sign of the inner conflict. Uh, sign number seven, fatigue or lack of energy. When you have an inner conflict, you always uh, feel tired. You um, have to spend a lot of energy in order to suppress your inner conflict. Um, that's why you feel uh, tired, you feel fatigued and lack of energy because your inner conflict is killing you from inside. So if you wake up in the morning by uh, and by 2 p.m. you feel tired, then this is a sign of an inner conflict. And the sign number eight is psychosomatic. Uh, when we have an inner conflict, our body, and we don't do anything with this conflict, we don't work on this conflict, our body becomes uh, to react. We have muscle scrum, we have high blood pressure, we have low immune system, we have a lot of headaches, and Mm, this is psychosomatics. Our body always uh, give us some signs that something is wrong with us. Something is wrong with us. And if you feel stress, anxiety, and inner conflict all the time, then you will have effect on your body. And your inner conflict uh, is stopping you from moving forward. Extra weight or extra fat is your suppressed energy. It means that you have a resource. You have a lot of energy. Fat is your resource. You have a lot of energy. You have a lot of energy inside of you, but you're not using it. And if you're not using it, one day it might be too late. Uh, so everything comes from our childhood. 
and therefore you need to heal your inner child you have to fulfill your inner child with love care support and help him to feel protected so tip number nine is uh, try to remember what did you do uh, in when you were a child maybe you liked to run maybe you loved drawing maybe uh, you love dancing, watching cartoons, create a list that will help you to connect with your inner child. And in our childhood, we were pleased, we were, we were happy, and uh, we had a lot of things that made us, um, that bring uh, joy to us. And food, ice cream, it was only one part of uh, this list. And in, uh, in, when we were children, we had imagination and we could create a happy place for us. So we had a lot of emotions. And it's very important to connect with this inner child, to bring joy back, to bring happiness back. And uh, that's why uh, I'm um, offering you to create this list of childhood uh, things that made you happy and let's talk about the reality back to reality uh, how many tips uh, do you remember so far so I uh, offered you nine tips and how many uh, do you remember And the second question, how many of them are you going to do? And uh, you don't have to answer publicly. You can just you know, think about it and uh, keep your answer to yourself. But honestly, what is your inner child is saying right now? And uh, probably he or she does not want to do anything. Or maybe he will do one, two things. Maybe you remember two, four tips, but you're not going to follow them. And this is normal. Usually, uh, when people work on themselves without a mentor, without a therapist, without a psychologist, without a support group, they do not achieve big results. In order for us to achieve a big result, we need somebody who's going to uh, guide us, somebody who's going to help us. It's like if you're going to learn how to surf without a teacher, probably you're not going to uh, achieve big result. Or maybe you will, but uh, other nine people won't. Right. So uh, my tip number 10, join me for eight weeks of online training how to heal your inner child. And you have a choice right now. You can continue to live the way you lived, or you can uh, give an opportunity to your child to be healed. You can heal your inner child and you can create a life that you really want and really deserve. The choice is yours. And uh, briefly, I will tell you about this online workshop. Uh, so this online workshop, workshop will have three main parts and uh, on the first part we will learn how to connect with your inner child. Before you're going to heal your inner child, you need to learn how to connect with your inner child, how to hear him, how to understand him. And then we're going to fulfill him with love. Uh, we will give him sense of protection and you will work uh, on your anxiety level and you will work with your anger because we do have a lot of anger inside of us and uh, one of the reasons why people eat more than they have to because they don't know how to manage the anger they don't know how to protect their boundaries they feel anger towards other people or towards yourself and we're gonna work on this we're gonna learn how to use this anger how to transform it in order to achieve your goals in order to achieve your desires and how to create healthy boundaries. So the second part will be about anger management, about uh, boundaries and about um, your fears. Uh, and uh, it's gonna be also a third part where we get talk about shoulda, woulda, coulda feelings, feelings that I have to, I must to, I have to be a good girl, a good boy, 
uh, good girl syndrome, uh, good boy syndrome, we're gonna work on your self-esteem and self-confidence. And I will teach you how to overcome your hidden childhood fears. We all have fears that we, we might not realize them, but we all have fears, we all have anger, and we all feel afraid of this world, of other people. That's why people eat more and more and more. So I will teach you how to say no. I will teach you how to you which phrase uh, to use. Uh, and I will tell you how to connect with yourself and how to allow yourself to be who you are, how to accept yourself. And this workshop will start on October 10th and it will be eight weeks of online training. Again, all sessions will be recorded and emailed to all participants. Even if you cannot join uh, me online, you can watch all videos later. And I offer four ways to participate, uh, four packages. The first package is basic package uh, for five weeks of online training. And uh, mostly on during those weeks, you will learn how to connect with your child, how to understand your child, and you're gonna work a little bit on your hidden anger, hidden aggression. Uh, you can, uh, during this uh, eight, five weeks, you can ask your questions during a uh, live broadcast and the price is the most affordable that you can have. The second package is full package. It's all weeks of training, the full training. And uh, again, uh, here you can uh, get my support and ask your questions if you join me for live broadcasts. The third package is premium package and it's also for eight weeks of training, but here uh, for a little bit more money, you will get much more benefits because you will be able, you will have an opportunity, ability to send your questions by email. And this is great package for those who won't be able to um, attend live broadcast, who won't be able to come uh, online, but a person who wants to have a feedback from me, a person who wants to get extra support. So this is the great package for you. And the people who will go with the basic or full package, they will have to uh, prepare the list of their questions for the next broadcast. But people who choose premium package, they will be able to ask their questions during the whole eight weeks by email. And the fourth package, the VIP package. Of course, this is the deepest way to work on your inner child and you will get your results faster, uh, deeper, and it's gonna be longer. Uh, so during uh, this package includes all the benefits from premium package plus seven private one-on-one -on -one sessions with me, online sessions. And during those sessions, uh, we can discuss not only uh, the training, we can also uh, discuss situation, your feelings, your emotions, your questions that will rise during those eight weeks. So uh, with this package, you will receive not only the training, but additional seven private one-on-one -on -one session with me. And during our private sessions, I will offer you additional exercises, additional meditations that will help you to speed up your uh, healing process. Uh, and we're going to work specifically on your childhood trauma and uh, I will customize exercises for you. And of course, I offer discounts. The best discount is 25% off uh, and you can get it if you invite your friend and when both of you sign up together each of you will get 25% off so basically buy one and get another one for 50% off the second discount is uh, uh, flexible uh, I give 5% discount for each link that you post about this webinar on social media. So if you share a link to this video or to this webinar on your Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook groups, uh, then you will get 5% discount for each link. And the last question is how to sign up, how to register. And you can fill out the form on my website. The link will be below this video. You can send your request or your questions by email. And my email is info at elenasemenek.com. 
uh, or you can send your request by Facebook or Instagram. Uh, you can see the link on the screen or below the video. And of course, I am inviting you uh, to the last uh, fourth webinar of this series, which is going to be about personal boundaries and low self-esteem. And this webinar will be next Thursday, same, same time, different link. So if you want to uh, join me for the next webinar, click the link below this video to sign up. It's absolutely free. And uh, we're gonna discuss 10 reasons why uh, it is so difficult to defend your opinion, to defend your interest. We're gonna talk about low self-esteem, feelings of guilt and shame, fear of being judged. We're gonna talk about why it's so difficult to share your feelings with friends and loved ones. I will uh, share with you 10 reasons why people cannot create healthy boundaries. And we're going to talk about two types of boundaries, reactive and proactive, uh, the difference between them, and uh, you will be able to understand yourself better, your relatives, your friends better, once you're going to notice what type of boundaries do they want. And of course, if you liked uh, like this video, please give me a thumb up. This is extremely important for me. Send your questions uh, below in comments box below. Uh, share this video with your friends. Share it on Facebook and uh, on your social media, on your Twitter, your Pinterest, your Instagram. Uh, please help me uh, spread the world, uh, spread the word about this uh, great opportunity to learn and to work on yourself. And, and you know, this is the free information, free tips, free advice. Uh, and uh, give me a thumb up and subscribe to my video so you won't miss next free webinar or next educational video that I post usually two or three times a week. Again, my name is Lena Semenek and this is Psychology of Happiness, where happiness is the purpose of life. See you next time. Bye-bye.